Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today, I've got Brendan Burns with Kuyu. Brendan, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jay. How are you doing? Good. You know, we got great response uh, from our last uh, Kuyu Q&A session, so I figured we'd get one going here very quickly after the other one. And so we've got a bunch of questions that I want to dive into. Before we get to that, uh, how's spring in Bozeman, Montana? Uh, we got a lot of snow. Yeah, I, I can't remember having this much snow, so it's uh, it's been a cold, miserable spring. I still can't see the grass in my yard. Um, yeah, it's been a, been a long winter, I can say that. But, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, and, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. We got a lot of feedback last uh, on the last one from customers, and, uh, yeah, and it's been great. I just want to remind everybody before we get started, if you have any questions whatsoever that we don't answer today, um, you can call into customer service or email in service at com. Everybody will do everything they can to get your question answered as soon as possible. Yeah, and Brendan, that's one of the things I've always liked about Kuyu is the fact that, you know, your customer service reps are so good and so knowledgeable. Uh, they know everything about the product, and for whatever reason, if there's something that they don't know uh, or aren't as sharp on, they, they, you know, ask their associate, and, and they have very prompt response times. Um, Brendan, let's just dive into the questions. We've got a slew of them here, so... Uh, we've got a question, uh, better clothing labels, question mark, uh, so people requesting better better clothing labels. Well, um, all our new clothing labels have the sizes and the actual item name on them. Um, we've also left a large blank space. If people are getting the new labels, they'll see there's a large blank space so you can write your name on it, uh, on the product, because if you're in camp like me, and I'm not going to say my friends are, are thieves, but... That's pretty much what it is. And I, I think I'm down. I, I think I'm down ten to forty Peloton beanies. So um, you can write your name on stuff just to let everybody know. Or if you have the same gear, you're drying it out or whatever. But uh, we're, I think, pretty much the new labels are almost across the board now. Something if, you know, they, they might not be on everything yet, but that's that's where it's all headed. I know I've heard people say before that, you know, they like the garment so much and they're down the road from when they had ordered it and they're like, gosh, I love this, but I don't even know what it is. I've heard that several times, so I'm glad they're, they're going to have uh, labels on there. Next yeah, we question, used to have, ha yeah, just real quick, we used to have the tear-out labels, which, which is great if, you know, you don't want to tag on you or touch you or whatever, and, and, and that was the big complaint is that um, – you, you didn't know what it was once you once you owned it and loved it. You couldn't really look back on it. So yeah, we've we've addressed that. Great. Next question: uh, Have either of you used the Zeiss Victory RF? Um, how does the glass compare to the Swarovski EL? I've always been partial to Swarovski. I've I've also always said that you know the three uh, big European. You know you've got uh, Leica Zeiss and Swarovski, they're all very, very comparable. Um, I personally have not used the uh, Zeiss Victory Rangefinder myself, but I do have the EL range. Um, the only thing I would say on the EL range is it, you know, the closest it'll, it'll read is 33 yards. Um, and for some bow hunters, that creates a problem. I'm kind of one of those guys that, like, if you have to range under 33 yards, we've I think we've kind of got a little bit of a problem there. Um, not saying that the arrow doesn't fly differently from, you know, zero to 33 yards, but we're talking a minuscule, you know, very small uh, amount of correction there. So, uh, Brendan, have you used either one of them? I have. I've used them both. Actually, I own them both. Um, the Zeiss is slightly bigger. Um, I saw the new one at the show this year. I've not used the brand new one, which is pretty intriguing. The difference is obviously the buttons on the different side. I, I generally only use range finding binoculars when I'm either rifle hunting or guiding, um, which is obviously very helpful. Um, I prefer a handheld when I'm bow hunting. I, I don't range find with a bino when I'm bow hunting at all. Um, it's a cool, you know, the, the big three like you're talking about are all pretty incredible glass and the other thing is they're always pushing each other. I mean, I was at the show this year, and I've, I've been using mostly Swirl. I've got some Leica. I've got some Zeiss. Um, and I, I saw, you know, Zeiss came out with a new, like their new Victory SF, which is a really cool-looking box there. I haven't used it yet, but uh, it's similar to, it looks like the Swarovski EL where it's got two bridges. Um, very light, pretty incredible. So um, they're always kind of pushing each other, like the BTX last year, and who knows what's coming. So they're, they're both great. Um, the Zeiss does have the button on the right side. So if you're bow hunting and um, 
you can you can reach it obviously if you're holding your bow in your if if you're right handed. So right, but, right. Both holding the bow in the left yeah. hand, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, next question: Essential items for a flatlander that hunts out west once a year. Um, <clears throat> boy, you need a full layering system. I mean, I don't. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know if there's one essential item. I mean, we go back to the question before. Really great glass. I mean, I think. Uh, I guess I don't know what you consider a flatlander. Eastern Montana is pretty flat. You need. You know, it just depends on what. Uh, flat ladder. I assume somebody out east or, or in the Midwest, but um, really good glass. I would say is uh, you know full layering system, really good glass. There's, you need it all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, kind of hard to kind of pinpoint that question. It's it's fairly vague. Um, Probably a GPS. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Let's see. It's Kuyu uh, stop. Did Kuyu stop selling the Petzl? Uh, NAO headlamp, if so, why? Mm, yes, we did. Um, the availability has been pretty difficult to get from Petzl's, basically the answer on that. Um, sometimes we just don't have them. And there was a few failures on the plastic piece that connects the power cord to the battery pack. So um, between those two things, we have, we have not continued selling. We have a new cool headlamp coming that will be in, in, the gear, in the gear shop. So. Okay. Favorite rifle and caliber for sheep hunts? And one luxury item you take up north with you? Uh, my favorite sheep caliber, it, it obviously depends on the hunt, but it has been a 65284 or, or one of the small short mags. Um, mostly bow hunting them anymore. But, um, you know, the, as far as a rifle, I, my, my goal has always been to carry a six pound, 600 yard gun. Um, the thing that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to sheep hunting up north, and obviously you've been on a couple sheep hunts now, Jay, is like, you're not taking shots further than, I mean, you, you have to age, age a ram. And then when you, when, you, when you consider, like, if you wound one, it's, it's you know, there, there's a lot riding on it. And kill fees, wound fees, you want to make sure that sheep's dead. So the really long-range shooting is not that applicable to sheep hunting. Um, you know, 500 and in, you know, that's, that's what I consider a pretty large, long shot. But, it, you know, like 1,000-yard gun type stuff, really heavy guns. That's not the, there's not very many outfitters or many sheep hunts where you'd be on where you, would, you you should even take that shot. I mean, you really need to get in and look at them closer, especially when you're talking age and stuff like that. Um, and I look at a rifle as a, it's a paperweight until I really need it. So my, my sheep hunting rifles are between 6 and 7 pounds with with all the rounds in them and, you know, 500-yard capable. And then luxury item, uh, my own tent, if I had to say my own tent. I don't, I, you know, if you... Uh, that's one thing I just I take my own tent. You, you, I I want to sleep by myself. <laughs> I've only been stuck a couple yeah. times. With somebody that snores, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it especially with the uh, Mountain Star two person tent. It's so light, and to be able to you know on those days, Brendan, when you lose like 24 hours and have to stay in the tent because it's raining so hard. I mean, it gets old on a long hunt you know, being, you know, basically spooning with your buddy. That's just not, I agree with you 100%. Uh, let's see, any plans for base camp tents for person? We're always working on stuff, but not, not at this time. It's just not something we've spent some time on. Um, there's a lot of really good, you know, you get to four person, five person, you know, camp and or truck type tents, and there's a lot of options available. So we generally don't dive into something unless we can see some huge improvements. And as of right now, we just haven't worked on something like that. Early Arizona elk Peloton 97 or 118 paired with Tiburon pants. I mean, I would answer that uh, Peloton 118. A long sleeve shirt with the Tiburon pants is going to be the go-to, and then the Peloton 97 would be for the you know wear it over the top as as a layering piece um, for just those a little bit more brisk mornings for Arizona standards. That's what I would say, Brendan. 100% agree. The 118 is a true base layer. That's your next skin piece. And then you, you can use a 97 next to skin, but I generally, it's a mid-layer for me. I mean, 95% of the time, then that Peloton 97 is a mid-layer. Um, and it only weighs five ounces. It's an awesome, you know, throw in your pack mid-layer, especially in that warmer type stuff. And paired with Tiburon pants, like I would say all three, that's a, that's a pretty good system. It really depends on the temperature, too. I mean, um, yeah. 
you know, that's, that's a great system. I, Brendan, I think where people get confused is the Peloton 97 obviously is a lower number than the Peloton 118, so they're thinking that the, the 97 is actually a quote-unquote like thinner or, you know, more of the base layer, but it's actually the thinnest, uh, At least. Yeah, it's the thinnest. widest, thinnest of the base of the uh, mid layers, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we, we label everything, again, I think I said this last time, we label everything based on the grams per meter squared weight, and that's one that falls because it's so light that falls uh, below another, it's just a different product, so it's, it's our lightest mid-layer. That's the easiest way to look at the Peloton 97 is our lightest mid-layer, and the 118 is actually our lightest base layer, so different next to skin, um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's slightly confusing. If we, I'm sure if we had to do it over again, we would, we would rename the Peloton. 97. Uh, will Kuyu be coming back, uh, let's see, will, will Kuyu be bringing back the Teton line or something similar in the future? Um, we already have similar. Um, we won't be bringing back the Teton line. As we're filling in the entire uh, product line that we make, uh, there's a lot of things that have fallen in that we really don't need the Teton line anymore. The Rubicon and the Sierra Pan are very similar to what, what we used to have in the Teton line with obviously some improvements in, in fabric and design and, and fall is similar in price point and um, that's that's basically where those are from are at so uh, I'll be bringing back that, that line would you wear rain gear over down pants and jacket or vice versa it just depends on what you're doing in the late season a lot of times I'll wear the super down pro just as this primary over the top of my stuff when I'm glassing or whatever especially when it's really really close you know especially if you have a glassing pad um, when you have to throw rain pants over is, you know, sheep hunting when you're, you know, sitting glass and then there's, you're in sharp rocks and all that stuff. Obviously, the, the Super Down Ultra and the Super Down Pro are designed to be, you know, as light as you, as light insulation pieces. So they're not super durable. So if you're worried about ripping them, then it's a great time to throw your rain gear over the top or like the Super Down Ultra. Sometimes I'll put with, if I'm wearing a full zip base layer or whatever, I'll put it underneath. But, um, yeah, I mean, obviously you need to protect it, especially, you know, depending on what kind of you know, what kind of terrain you're in. I mean, it certainly will get, it's not the most durable because it's designed to be very packable and lightweight and warm. Peloton 240 vest for late August doll sheep in the Brooks range. Um, it would kind of depend on if it's going to be your primary outer piece. A lot of guys like to wear a vest with a, with a pack all the time, which is you know, kind of like a saddle blanket for slip or whatever. I, I've done that. A lot. I, I love wearing. I mean, the, the 240 is more of a mid-layer vest. The guide DCS vest is obviously like an outer soft shell vest. They're just they're just different. Uh, both, um, you know, the, the Peloton 240 has act has uh, act wind in it, so it's 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 more windproof but lighter. And the DCS vest, obviously without arms, they're both really built to breathe. So, just depends. Both are very similar. Um, one's a soft shell. Um, one's more of a mid-layer. Um, just both are excellent. Okay, let's see here. A uh, sneak peek at any new gear coming out. Yeah, we have a bunch of new stuff coming here in the next 60 days, some incredible new products that I uh, can't wait to tell everybody about or show everybody. Um, you're just going to have to wait a little while. They're all, they're all in the works right now. So in the next 60 days, you'll be seeing a, a bunch of new stuff from KU. Great, looking forward to that. Uh, let's see, Alaska Range Sheep Hunt mid-September guide jacket and attack pant or Axis Hybrid top and bottom. Both would work well. My my personal system for mid-September on that kind of a hunt right now is the is the Kenai and the Pro Pant or the Talus. The guide and attack is a great system. I've used that a bunch. Um, combination works great. Basically, you need a you need a primary or non rain gear jacket and a primary and, you know, like a non-rain gear pant. So it just depends on if you like knee pads. That would be the, the pro or the talus. If you like, um, if it's going to be colder, you look at the long-term forecast, it looks like it's going to be a nasty September on the Brooks Range, and I might go with a soft shell like the, the Axis or the, or the Guide. Um, really, all of them will work well. I mean, that's why we all have hip vents that dump heat and are designed for very specific stuff. So um, all, all of those will work. Um, I, yeah, lately I would say in, in September... In, in kind of colder type stuff would be uh, the Kenai and the Pro is what I used on the brown bear hunt last spring, and that was kind of those kind of conditions. So um, all good options. <laughs> Will Kuyu ever uh, offer suspenders for their pants? 
Um, not at this time. Um, we do have them coming out on one piece. Uh, we'll be releasing them this fall, but not on not on a regular pants at, at this time. Um, yeah, I've, I've never been a big suspenders guy, and haven't, we don't actually get a lot of requests for that either. What does it take to be a rep for Kuyu? By rep, I, I guess it need to be more specific. Um, we don't have any sales reps being consumer direct. If you're talking a, a, a customer service rep, it would be working at the at the Dixon headquarters, answering phones. Um, I don't know, are they talking like pro staff or? or I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say there. Um, it, it's hard to say, but Kuyu doesn't have a pro staff like you see a lot of these other companies have a quote unquote pro staff. Kuyu doesn't have a pro staff. We do not have a pro staff. Our, our customers, the, the bottom line for our business is our customers are our pro staff. The, the nature of our business and the products we make is, in reality, every customer is a, is a very serious hunter. Um, pro staffs are old school and, you know, quite frankly, a, a bit offensive to, uh, to, to, to really serious guys. The bottom line is that every day if I look through our customer list, um, there are names that roll through that have far more experience have, have hunted far more places all over the planet and, and hunted sheep all over the place um, more than any competitor's pro staff could have. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's the question, but we, we don't have a pro staff. It's our customer. When is the next Kuyu website sale? Um, our anniversary sale, I believe, is coming up next week, so keep an eye out. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Merino or Peloton to hunt Ibex? In, I think it's Kyrg Kyrgyzstan, October, yeah, Kyrgyzstan. yeah, 2019. Um, it depends on what you prefer. Both are, are great. Um, one's hydrophobic, one's hydrophilic. One is uh, we make, you know, the merino pieces generally don't block the wind like the synthetic pieces um, with the Peloton uh, being like, especially like the 240. Again, you're just going to want to build a system that lends itself to how your body reacts to exertion and cold weather. And, I mean, Kyrgyzstan in October is going to be similar to, you know, Montana in October, maybe slightly colder depending on the year. Yeah, um, you can go super light. Um, depends on if, you know, a lot of, some guys really like merino, some don't. Yeah, just, just depends on what you want. I mean, but I would say if you were leaning towards something that was more windproof, I would say the Peloton 240, or if you're looking for something that's more breathable, I would lean towards the, the merino. There's a question. Tell us about the two-person Mountain Star. I'm in the market for a new tent. Not a ton of reviews out there. You kind of covered the Mountain Star. But one question I would ask is, is the 2P Mountain Star kind of your number one selling tent at Kuyu? Um, off the top of my head. As far I, as I, numbers? Yeah, I think so. We, we sell a lot of those. I mean, again, it's, it's just got a little bit different design. It's got a double vestibule, and it's eight inches wider. Um, there, there are slight, you know, and you're talking a little over three-pound tent. There, there are slightly lighter tents out there, but at the end of the day, when you, it's also you want to look at is that practical to hunt out of. Um, you can get front-loader tents that are slightly li that are lighter, but if you've ever camped out in a front-loader, it, it's really it's not that awesome to climb over your gear to get in and out. It's nice to have your own vestibule. It's nice to have eight inches more of, of, of shoulder room, especially if you are sharing a tent. Um, or, you know, like for myself, I, I generally take the, unless I know I'm going to need a four season, I'll take the, the Mountain Star by myself. Um, and then you just have a ton of room. It's not that heavy. And um, like I said, that's, that's kind of my one extra thing. If I, if I have a chance, I will, I will definitely use my own tent. And it's just, just gives you a little more room and a little, it's just more livable. Any chance of Kuyu bringing back the Kenai zip-off pants? They were great, exclamation point. There's a great chance, and it'll probably be with a better design. It's not uh, not coming any time, uh, like it's not in the next 60 days or anything, but, uh, yeah, we, we will be at some point in time working on that. Why no hand kangaroo pockets in the lightweight hoodies like the 97, 145, 118, and 200? Um, all I can say is just uh, keep your eyes open in the next 60 days. May or may not be something coming that's, that has a, uh, has a pocket like that. So, Okay, Sierra pants, good for New Mexico turkey season, question mark. Yeah, every pant we make would be, would be great for, you know, the, you know, whether it's Tiburon, the Sierra, the Attack, Pro, it just depends on, you know, which one you like, and, and heavier or lighter, I don't, I don't, it can be pretty nasty in turkey season. Uh, I personally prefer 
one of our pants with the hip vents, which the Sierra does not have. Um, but great pant. And then I would also say like the talus, because spring turkey hunting, typically that grass is wet, and having the ability to um, talk about maybe the talus for that, in your opinion. Yeah, the talus pan is a is basically a, a tack pan everywhere where you need stretch, and then a um, membrane soft shell where you um, with with a knee pad um, in the in the front leg from mid thigh down, and then on the butt to where you would sit down. And it's a great pan. I I I wear that pan. I would say after October first, especially here. A majority of the time, it's a, it's an awesome pan, um, and basically just going to protect you um, walking grass, um, but it's got the stretch everywhere you need it, but the four way stretch, so it's it's just a really incredible pan. <coughs> um, and again, it's just you know, depends on depends on what you're doing. I mean, I turkey on in the springtime can be super super hot, and obviously you'd want to adjust to that, or it can be wet and miserable like every spring. Um, I look at turkey on as like black bear hunting it's similar conditions like you just don't know what you're going to get peloton 130 gloves discontinued um the 130 is discontinued and it is uh, being replaced with a really really cool new style coming very soon that's his way of saying be on the lookout <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> will there yeah. be a new bow swing uh, and bring back the flat brim hat question mark <laughs> We don't have a bow sling. There's some patent issues on on that on the designs on a bow sling. I don't personally use a bow sling very often. I'm either carrying my bow or have it on my pack. Our our bow holder obviously allows you to secure your bow um, to your pack and and be able to you know hike with it out of the way and, and, and it's very secure. Um, as far as hats, I'm not a flat brim guy, but we uh, we have quite a few new styles in the works. I don't really wear a hat very often, but uh, I'm not 100% sure it's the flat brim. Um, I'll just have to keep updated on the site. Can you tuck your ears into your hats, Brennan? I, I yeah, I just, I mean, obviously you know me. I don't, I don't even wear a hat that often, so. <laughs> You're not answering that question. Yeah. Okay, what would you wear for mid-January coos hunt in Mexico? Brennan, I'll kind of answer that. You can yep. chime in. I like the guide camp. Um, that's what I've worn for a long time. Uh, obviously you've got temperatures, you know, 20, mid twenties in the morning to as high as, you know, seventies during the day. So you definitely have to have a lot of different layers. Uh, I typically go with a 145, uh, zip T Merino, uh, as my base layer. Then I, then I go with a 240, uh, Peloton hoodie. Uh, and then normally I will have either the Ultra Down or the Super Down Pro uh, as my jacket. If I'm going to be doing a lot of hiking, uh, I will have the Kenai uh, jacket. The Kenai is made for active hunting, whereas the Super Down uh, or the Ultra Down you want to be just kind of wearing when you're glassing. But if you're planning on, you know, walking ridge lines and really being active that day, I would wear the Kenai jacket. Um, Brendan, anything you would add there? Well, I've only been on one coos deer hunt in mid-January. It was with you, so I think you're definitely more of an expert in that. Um, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. I mean, there's I, I do have a whole list. If, if you want to send me an email, I can give you my whole list and go through everything. Uh, so just send me an email, and I'll be happy to send it to you. Best Colorado mid-September elk setup? Colorado mid-September elk setup. Um it really depends on what you're doing. I, I keep, I know, I keep reiterating that. But um, is it is it a backpack hunt, or are you hunting out of a base camp, or are you hunting out of a, a trailhead? I guess it would just depend uh, as far as your packs that it would go. But my my early season out west is uh, Tiburon and Pant, Attack Pant, or Pro Pant, just depending on whether you like the pads. If it's super super hot, or or the Attack is obviously kind of the go-to. I generally have the 145 zip off long underwear is kind of what I use that time of year a lot. Peloton briefs. Um, I, I do you like the Scree Gator for the early season a lot, um, and I've been wearing the, the R Evolution um, in the early season. As far as my top, um, I would say I'm going to say this guy's probably bow hunting. So the Kenai jacket is kind of my primary outer piece that time of year for a couple reasons. One, it's, it's quiet. You can hike in it if it does. If you do get cooled down, you need an insulation piece. Um, you know, obviously the um, it's active insulation with no coating on it, so it's it's really the 
the quietest insulation piece out there. And if you're bow hunting, that that really makes a lot of sense. Um, I use the Peloton 240 a lot in the early season, or or the 210 Merino, something like that. Um, and then my base layer is either the 118 or the, the 118 Peloton or the 125 um, long sleeve Ultra Merino. Um, you know, ball cap. I generally pack a 240 beanie, a neck gaiter, um, some some liner gloves, and a and a guide glove. Um, Bino system rangefinder pouch. And then when you, when you get down to what you're going to take in your pack, it, it's going to depend. I mean, is it, a, is it a backpack hunt or is it a day hunt? Are you out of a base camp, as I said earlier? So if it's uh, uh, kind of a, a place where you're spiking out every day from from one location, you're you're going out hunting every day. I generally carry the Icon Pro 3200 because until I find a bull that I'm trying to hunt, I, I'm generally packing a spotting scope because I really want to get a good look and I'll get some footage of them. Um, but if, obviously, you can take a smaller pack if, if you're not carrying more stuff. I generally have um, either a set of Chugach rain gear in my pack. Just you never know in the early season. Um, and a lot of times, depending on the temperature, I'll have a ultra down jacket and pants stuffed in my pack as well. Bow holder, water bladder, you know, all my, you know. And when it comes to elk season, I'm, I'm generally packing four large quarter game bags and two large bone out game bags. I've been pretty much able to break every bull down in, into that um, for packing them out. And I like to have them with me just if you, if you get when, when you get one, so that's pretty much my system that I would run that time of year. And again, it can go from we can add tents and back and uh, sleeping bags and everything else, depending on how, <clears throat> depending on if it's if it's off your back or how far in you are. Um, and again, if you shoot an email in a service at coo dot com when I get my early season gear list, uh, I'm happy to send it to you. Okay, Ultra Mer Merino one forty five. Uh, Super Down Pro Ultra followed by Axis Hybrid Warm Enough November Kansas Hunt. Yeah, I would say so. Um, might want to run something in between a mid layer. I mean, Ultra Marino 145, maybe a 97 Peloton or a 200 or a or a 240, and then the and then the Super Down Pro, and then the Axis. I mean, that's a, that's a really great system. It's going to be pretty warm. I um, went in to help a guy pack an elk out this fall, and it was. I think 22 below zero, and that's basically what I was wearing on a on a horseback. So, um, again, it just depends on your exertion level and how cold you run, and yeah, but that's that's a pretty good system. Oh, you'll love the next question, Brendan. Here we got the J Scott Outdoors podcast listeners getting. Can we get a J Scott Kuyu discount code? It's been a couple years and ready to buy new Kuyu. Well, nice, I, putting Brendan on the spot, asking for asking yeah. for discount. Where are the softballs? Come on, um, <laughs> we, we have our anniversary sale coming up next week. I think you'll uh, you'll be able to take advantage of that. Um, we really don't do the discount codes. I mean, being truly consumer direct, we've already cut out the middleman, and it just really doesn't fit into our business plan. Um, you know, again, we try and give an incredible value to everybody on all our products all the time, and you know, we make it, we buy. It, we make it and we sell it. Um, and we we truly cut out the the middleman. I mean, a lot of that discount code stuff is because there's a heavy retail markup, even if they're selling online. So that's that's kind of it. Just really falls into what our business plan is and what the the foundation of the company and how it was built. Uh, for hunting in Arizona, either coos or elk, what pattern do you prefer to wear, bias or verde? Well, you're in Arizona, but I, I would say it depends on the tr terrain. And, and, I mean, it look, the difference between Unit 10 and Unit 27 for elk uh, are, are huge, <laughs> highly different. Yeah. Um, both, but really, our patterns are both macro breakup patterns designed to destroy your outline. So they, they both will work very well. I mean, um, anytime you can, you know, match the base a little better as far as color, whether it's green or tan, I think you'll blend in better. But uh, I don't know. What's your take, Jay? Yeah, no, I mean, I say if I'm hunting more deserty stuff, I'm wearing the Vias. If I'm hunting more forested stuff, I'm hunting the Verde 2.0. Um, but like you said, I've worn both in both situations, and, and uh, they seem to perform very well. Uh, normally, you know, the desert sheep hunts, the coos hunts, uh, I'm in Vias. Uh, and, you know, say the turkey hunts, uh, the uh, elk hunts, I'm normally in, in Verde 2.0. That's kind of how I do it. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, all around pant for bow hunting August through September, 30 to 80 degrees, elevation 65 to 10.5 in Utah. I mean, man, it's hard to beat that timber on pant. Uh, yeah. Brandon. It says 30 to 80 degrees. I'm going to say uh, if it's 80, it's Tiburon. Um, in the middle, you know, pro and attack, it, it, again, it just depends on the weather. Pro and attack, very similar. Obviously, one has knee pads, one doesn't. And if it's more towards 30, um, you know, late September up high, like I would lean towards the Talus. Um, but I, I would say the last four or five years, I mean, I'm, I'm generally in the Tiburon with some full zip long underwear almost all the month of September. Um, I'm not hunting that quite that high elevation, but... Those, those temperatures are, are what I spend most of the time in, and I, I can say, especially since it's generally heating up in the, in the daytime, that I'm running to run most of the time. Any new cat camel patterns in the works? We're always working on new things, but it's not something that's in the, in the direct near future right now. Do you, does Kuya make a patch kit for clothing or have suggestions for repairs? Uh, we answered this last time, but yeah, we're we're working on a really cool patch kit for all our products, basically every fabric that we have coming out, and keep an eye out for that. And then for repairs, um, we we recommend send it to Rainy Pass. They do such a great job, and uh, we just don't have the capability of you know some of that seam tape stuff. There's a lot that goes into it. And they they do an amazing job. So if you if you need a big repair, um, I can't recommend Rainy Pass enough. Uh, let's see. When will the Tiburon Zip Shirt Verde 2.0 be back in stock? Um, before hunting season, um, we'll have some additional stock, and there's a change coming to that particular piece um, that just to keep an eye out for um, adds a little bit of more comfort. Um, looks like we're all out, but in the 3XL. So, uh, but yeah, that's it's coming. Will you have a piece that serves as insulation and outer shell? Yes. Um, keep an eye out for it. It's going to be later than, later in the fall. Nice. Uh, is there a huge difference between the 118 and the 130 Peloton? Um, yeah. I mean, this is one of those things where we're always innovating, and when a, when a better fabric comes along, you know, obviously that's a Prime Flex. It uh, doesn't have any elastic in it. Um, the new 118, it's just it's quicker drying. It has more stretch. It's got improved next to skin comfort. Um, it's got a better drape and feel to it, uh, more stretch. It's just just a just a superior fabric, which is why we replaced it. Um, it doesn't mean that the 130 wasn't good. It's just when when Thore shows up and, and they have a better fabric and and with 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 things that make it perform better, we we generally switch it out. And been super happy with the 118. It's 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 an awesome piece. Okay, Brendan, got a question here. Details on sleep system. Always talk clothes, but let's hear more about the tents and bags. Good question. Pretty pretty in depth. Um, so basically, our tent system. We have four tents really, and our tent system we've designed right now is really designed to be as versatile as possible for uh, mountain hunting year round. Um, and the four different tents we have, I'll just kind of go through each one and and kind of what what and where you would use each one and, and, and what it is is uh, our Ultrastar 1P tent. It's a, it's a single wall, and it's, I kind of use it as like a scouting tent. It's 19 ounces. It uses a single trekking pole. It's a single wall, um, and it's really great for early season or quick overnight type hunts. Um, I've used it to very cold, but in reality, I, I use it as more of a scouting tent or early season. Um, our next tent would be the Mountain Star 2P, and that's a three-season, two-man it's about uh, 3.3 pounds. <clears throat> it's got an exterior structure, double hoop and truss design, meaning you stake it down and then put the poles up on the outside and then clip it in, so that allows you to set it up without getting the, the full tent wet. Um, it's got a double vestibule, asymmetrical footprint, meaning um, you can enter from either side. And if you're, I use it single a lot, but if you're hunting with two guys, it's, it's eight inches wider at the head where two people would sleep. Um, that's where the asymmetrical footprint comes in, um, and then uh, so and, and why that why that is different is the fact that it you know a lot of tents are designed to sleep foot to head, and if you've ever even attempted that, that is not the optimal way because somebody's downhill, and it's just not a great thing for mountain hunting to be next to your buddy's feet. It's just not awesome. Um, so we designed it to be 
double vestibule, meaning each person enters by themselves through their own side, puts their gear on their own side, and then it's eight inches wider at the at the head where you would sleep, so you have more more room, basically, if there are two people. And the double vestibule, there's there's easier ways to get a three person tent or a three season tent lighter, um, but it's it would be a front loader, and if you ever slept two people on a front loader, it's just it's not optimal. Um, so that's that's the Mountain Star two P. And that's a three-season tent. Use it up to, uh, you know, like I'll take it this summer in the Northwest Territories. Um, you know, if you can get really nasty four-season weather, you, you switch over to a, a later-season tent. Um, the next one would be the Summit Refuge 3P. It's a sub-two-pound um, double trekking pole shelter. Um, it can be ran as a single wall or the fly. Um, it's compatible uh, for late-season type stuff with a wood stove. It's got a really cool stove jack system that uh, that Sean and our and our uh, office came up with it works very well um and it's great for um it's a three-person tent it's great for late season with the stove or as an early season shelter um and again you can look on the site about you know how it sets up and all that but really really cool season and the last one we have is the storm star 2p and that's a four season two man again set up like the like the mountain star but it's there's a four season it's a double vestibule double hoop and truss design um <clears throat> And the reason it's important that it's that it's exterior poles is that you can set it up in the rain. I mean, if you're in awful weather, pounding rain, you can set it up, get the structure set up, clip it in, and climb into it, and you're dry on the inside. Um, you don't have to put your fly over the top, which is a it's just a poor design. Um, and then a lot of times people ask, you know, the difference between a single wall or, or a, excuse me, the difference between a three season and a four season. And really, what it boils down to is there's there's a lot of tents out there they say it's a three season or three and a half season if your tent fly does not touch the ground and make it totally windproof it's not a four season if you can get enough wind that it can rip it off the ground and if there's any gap between the fly and the ground it's not a four season tent this one touches tight to the ground no matter what conditions you get no matter what wind um it'll hold up um it's fully seam taped and reinforced and it's just Really, they're built to hunt out of. I mean, the difference between that and some of the other tents that are out there is it's built to hunt. I mean, the asymmetrical floor design, if you are running with, with, with two guys together, um, you just have more room and you have your own room, which is which is really, really nice. Um, and then sleeping bags. Um, we offer three different bags in the Super Down sleeping bag, um, 0, 15, and 30 degree. Um, and the, the really the big difference between our bags and any other bag out there is we use the best down available. So we have 850 plus Polish Goose down. Um, and when you talk about sleeping bags, and particularly down bags with uh, with waterproof down or hydrophobic down, you're talking um, or waterproof down is, is you're talking the down is the biggest difference. So ours uses Quicks down, which is the highest quality waterproof down on the market. Um, <clears throat> and it's the same as everything in all our super down line, whether it's the jackets or anything else. And it is hands down the most waterproof treated down out there. Um, we've had it independently tested against our competitors by the IDFL, and you can go on our site and look at that, how that all runs down. And, and really, if I had to break it down, our competitors down, one of our competitors down was basically mush in an 80-minute shake test, and the best competitors down was mush at 300 minutes, and ours remained level 5, which is basically zero saturation, to 1,000 minutes when they turned it off. And... and Basically, it's just superior. It will last longer if it's put under those conditions. Um, you can check that all out at the site. <clears throat> and the bottom line with down is that it's a commodity. Uh, the better the down, the more expensive the bag. The only way to build a cheaper down bag is to use cheaper down. That's that's really an easy breakdown on it. Um, and if you were looking at the, the bags um, and you say, well, how does that matter in, like, a hunting-type situation? And I can tell you uh, a few years ago in 2014 we were on a, glacier in British Columbia, and, and I don't know if I just didn't set it up right, but my tent got flipped over, and we had a horrible, horrible rainstorm, and my sleeping bag was in in the tent, and basically for eight hours while we were gone, it pounded rain and filled up the inside of the tent. It was basically upside down like a funnel. Not ideal, obviously, but I got back, and my bag was not soaked um, because of the fact that and it's like... Is, is it worth it to have a, a, a really expensive bag with the best down in it? And I'm like, well, it, it, it could ruin your hunt if you did get it wet. You know, like, so let's say you're on a horse and a horse falls in a stream or in a river you're across and your bag flipped out. I mean, there's a million reasons to have the most waterproof down on your bag. Um, so that, that would be a quick breakdown. 
that's not so quick on the tent system and the and the sleet system. Okay. Let's see, we've got Yukon opener doll sheep horseback hunt gear list. Um, I can run through the whole gear list if you want to. Um, do you want to do that? Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay. Um, so I, I break my gear list kind of like the last time I break it down to the gear I'm wearing and what's in my pack and the other stuff I'm taking. And so um, Yukon opener will be August 1st. Um, can be, the weather can be terrible or it can be... It can be pretty nice. I did a hunt there in 2013. It was over 70 degrees the entire time, which wasn't ideal, but uh, it can also be, you know, in your tent for 10 days. So, um, and it's a horseback hunt, so I, that's where you adjust kind of your pack system. So I'll just quickly run through what I would what I would use on that. On my top, I would use, have uh, two gas rain gear, uh, a keen eye hooded jacket, or or a soft shell, um, being either the guide jacket or the Axis. Uh, I mean, if you, it depends on if you like a soft shell. I've been taking the Kenai a lot lately. Um, a 240 Peloton hoodie, um, a couple of 125 Merino short sleeve shirts, and that's basically all I double up on. Um, as far as uh, guide glove, um, I take probably a, a liner glove as well, whether it's a Peloton 200, um, or some lighter glove, um, a beanie, a Peloton 240 beanie, a cap, a Merino neck gaiter. <clears throat> and then uh, on the bottom, I'm going to bring two gas rain pants again, or Yukon. I, I guess it's a horseback on. I'd probably go with the Yukon as far as the rain gear. I'd go with the Yukon. It's a little more durable, and you never know when a horse is going to drag you through a tree, which is probably more often than not. Um, as far as pants, uh, tack pan or pro pan, and, unless it's really, really hot, and then obviously the Tiburon. <clears throat> 97 full zip long underwear or 145 Merino, depending on um, what you like better. Um, my socks, I usually take, uh, especially if you're on a horseback, you can take a little more, you, you know, two, two uh, ultra Merino socks and two thin Merino liners. Um, probably going to wear gaiters the whole time. And then on that, that hunt, uh, I'm going to take a scarf or Rebel K boot. Um, so that's my top and bottom. And then as far as a pack system, if you're going horseback, um, I like to ride horseback with a smaller pack, and so I, I take an Icon Pro 3200 um, bow or rifle holder, depending on what what kind of hunt you're on. Um, glass and pad, pack rain cover and medium. If I'm running a 3200, <clears throat> um, and that's more if it's raining, leave it outside your tent, leave it on the horse, whatever. Um, I would take a 30 degree super down bag that time of year. Um, or a 15, depending on the weather. Um, sleeping pad, obviously, and again, you know, when you, you know, whether it's a neo air or if you're on horseback, you can, you can obviously beef it up a little bit and go with a little more comfortable sleeping pad because you're probably going to be based out of either a, a larger tent or or, or a permanent base camp. Um, three liter water bladder, Havilon with blades, uh, headlamp, long spoon, um, for even mountain house and stuff. A one liter water bottle for. I'm um, getting water out of a stream. Um, dry bag. I, I take uh, six or seven roll top dry bags. Basically, anything in my pack or anything I'm packing with me is going to be in a dry bag, no matter what. <clears throat> um, and then, uh, this, I, I guess if you're it's a sheep hunt, I would take uh, two small bone out meat bags and two medium or large uh, bone in um, quarter bags, and then. Uh, Trekking pole, I probably on that hunt I would take trekking poles, especially if you're doing some hiking because you can break them down and put them on a horse. And um, also in my pack on that kind of a hunt, I, ha I usually have my Ultra Down or Super Down Pro jacket, pant, and glassing mitts in my pack all the time. Um, just glassing, riding, cold weather, um, I, I never leave without that stuff, so that's always in my pack. And as far as, you know, on horseback, you can, you can beef it up with the optics a little bit, which is nice. Um, you know, obviously, you're gonna have a bino system with a rangefinder. Um, on that, you know, off horseback, I like eights or tens. You know, if you, it's pretty hard to glass off a horseback, um, but if you do, less power is better. Um, some lens cleaners, rangefinder. Um, I would on horseback. I I take my 95. I take it most of the time, but in a, in a larger tripod with a with a larger head. Um, obviously, your camera. Satellite phone. Um, if I'm on horseback, I've got a satellite phone. You just those things are dangerous. It's always good to have 
be able to be able to call out or get help if you have to, or or they run away, and I, I keep that on me at all times. Um, and and then um, as far as personals, it's kind of the same stuff from went over. You know, first aid kit, toothbrush and paste, chapstick, vitamins, um, lighter and fire starter earplugs. Um, and one of the one of the things you want to bring on a horse is uh, is definitely sunglasses or regular glasses because they can they can definitely run you through the trees. Um, and and really, where a horseback hunt, where you're going to be able to have a lot more stuff you're going to take is really going to fall into food. Um, you can you have a lot more flexibility as far as food. So that that would be my uh, my August first Yukon horseback sheep hunt gear list. And if anybody wants to that gear list, they can email service at com or call in a customer service and I can, I can email that over to them. Brendan, I had another question that I'll pair with that. Uh, guy says, how many and what size game bags should I bring for an Alaska moose hunt? How many and what size? So that's what the extra larges are for. Let me look that up really, really quick. So the 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 quarter game bags are basically designed for that that type of a hunt, and I would uh, I would take. So it depends on if it's bone in or bone out, as far as how many you'd have to take. Um, you're going to need a minimum of four XLs for all the quarters, and some of the areas you have to bring out the ribs as well intact. Some is rib strips. Um, that's going to depend on whether you're going to break it down into into pure meat or. But let's just say it's ribs. So I would take at least six extra large. Um, quarter game bags, um, and then you're going to want to bring at least four or five. You know, and maybe even maybe even seven. I mean, if you're packing out a cape, it's nice to have it bug free with a cape. So let's just say seven extra large game bags. They are gigantic, um, and then um, a couple larges for loose meat, and then some 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 in the in the bone out game bags. Um, probably three or four of the largest for the random meat. Um, they, they are absolutely gigantic animals. I, I cannot stress enough. I, I have a lot of people call me that are thinking about doing a backpack moose hunt. And they are a daunting task when dead. They are just, they are enormous. I, I always compare it more to shooting a diesel truck. And I mean, if you want to compare them to a, to a Shiras moose or even the biggest bull elk you've ever seen, they are not even in the same ballpark. They are, they are just a whole nother level. So, um, I would just definitely say be prepared with, with everything you're going to need, multiple knives. Um, you know, you're not, you're not cutting a moose up with a Havilon, I can tell you that. Okay. Any, let's see. Uh, I want to hear about Brendan's Ibex hunt. The Ibex hunt. I did not go on the Ibex hunt this fall. Obviously, we had a lot of things happen this fall, and then uh, I, just, I just could not go. It just did not work out. But my, my buddy Robbie Doctor and Frank Maestri and Jason Whitteman from our office went, and they, uh, they had a great hunt, uh, killed three really nice Ibex, um, got to test some, really, some gear. Um, it was a, a really big horseback hunt. They, did, they spiked out. <laughs> Apparently, they made it a lot harder than they needed to, but they said it was a, it was a tremendous trip. The, uh, the only thing that they said is the travel is be prepared for the travel. I think um, they all left from my house, actually, when they went, and I think it was 60 hours um, from door to home wow. area. So be prepared for that. That was. Uh, I am going back um, probably. I don't know if I'm going to get back this fall, but I, uh, I am going to go back soon. Or not go back. I'm going to go um, sometime in the next right. year or two. Okay. Any plans for cold weather or insulated bibs? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people know that uh, I tested on the muskox on a couple of years ago. We have a full cold weather system coming, and uh, you just have to stay tuned. But it's uh, it's not that far out. Uh, would you ever do a waterfowl pattern slash clothing? Um, I would say we never say never with anything, but it's it's really not in the current not in the works currently. Um, and again, it just boils down. There's plenty of problems to solve in mountain hunting, and there's there's a lot of temperature ranges to uh, and stuff to do in, in right in our lane. And and I really we're very focused on solving the problems for mountain hunting right now. And you know maybe that's something we look at down the road, but it's it's definitely not in the works right now. Any plans to hunt moose in the lower 48? Are you saving up points? Um, I'd love to hunt Shiras moose again. I 
killed a 52 inch bull back in like 93 or 4 when I was in high school um, with a rifle. I'd love to, to bow hunt um, Shiras. I have points everywhere. Um, it's really just a points game. Um, yeah, I'd love to hunt them. But, uh, you know, as soon as they give me one of those tags, I will be hunting them again. What situations would you prefer keen eye synthetic insulation versus down? I mainly elk hunt. Um, pretty simple. Um, if you're moving, uh, obviously the keen eye is uh, active insulation. So um, if you're hiking, covering a lot of country, wearing as a primary outer outer piece, the um, the keen eye is superior. Um, that's what it's built for. It's really quiet. You know, whether you're still hunting through snow or um, stuff like that. And then, um, as far as the the down, I mean, it really when you're when you're not being active, the down is superior. I mean, it's the warmest per weight. It doesn't breathe like the keen eye. Um, if you're sitting glassing all day in a foot of snow, looking, you know, looking for a bull that's going to feed out of September, or I assume he's talking late season. Um, you really kind of need both. Um, one is one is built to breathe, and one is built to keep you as warm as possible when you're when you're not moving. So um, those are kind of the two areas I I, I use them in, and, and especially you know I, I really always kind of have both on me. Is a goat hunt physically more demanding than a sheep hunt? I wouldn't say physically more demanding. I mean, I guess it depends on the hunt and where you're at. Um, but they don't give up goats very easy. I would say that most of the time sheep are in, in easier country than, than goats are. Um, I can say the most dangerous places I've ever been have been in goat country, um, you know, especially in the Chugach there. I, I killed a, a sheep in goat country that was really really nasty that i was felt fairly uncomfortable and then on my uh on a goat hunt that we did in 2011 with my myself and my buddy matt true we we got it some stuff where yeah it's definitely dangerous and scary um you want to be prepared um but i would say in general goats live in tougher country for sure definitely can can live in tougher country why does kuyu not have gore-tex bibs or rain gear bibs in their selection um, we don't use Gore-Tex, obviously. Um, we feel there's better performing technologies out there as far as membranes, but um, we just don't have a bib right now. I don't really even have one in the works. I've not been a big bib guy, and again, when you're talking packable, and um, we feel like we've got that covered pretty pretty well as far as the rain pans zip off in and out easy. Um, but so obviously take into account any, you know, the, the number of suggestions that come from customers might be something we look at. Uh, did you get drawn for ram hunts or pay for them? Myself, personally, yeah, that's an interesting question. So I've taken nine rams uh, on ten hunts, and let me think here. Yeah, as far as the breakdown goes, I've drawn three sheep tags. I have won a stone sheep hunt. I have traded for three, whether it's, uh, um, you yeah, have traded for three of them. Your firstborn uh, child. Yeah, well, not even, you know, just really, I, I would Luke, say... Uh, Lucas has lots of work once he turns 18. He has to work for 10 years just to pay off your sheep hunts. <laughs> yeah, I could have just the right place at the right time on some of those. And, um, but, yeah, I've drawn three. I've won one in a drawing. I've traded traded or hustled three, um, and I've paid for two. And I'm always on the lookout for a great deal, and, and I've kind of always had a goal, for, well, I guess in the last 10 years, uh, I save and plan to book a sheep hunt every three years now, personally. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm always doing. Obviously, I have a lot of opportunities now at, at you know at Kuyu, but uh, a lot of the sheep hunts you even see, I've paid for myself or done through whether it's you know drawing them or whatever. And I've I've been pretty lucky. Obviously, I mean, uh, drawing three tags is is pretty incredible. So um, yeah, that's the breakdown. Um, and I'm gonna continue on that path as far as uh, the number, you know, again, I booked well, one of the hunts this summer is one I booked three years ago, and one of the hunts uh, is uh, one we've had booked for quite a while, so yeah, I've always got them in the plans. He's got a follow-up question, uh, Alaska moose hunt from base camp, any tips, things you wish you knew, let's see, things you wish you knew then? Um, the, the hunts I've done have been self-guided for Alaska moose uh, out of a boat and I guess the stuff I what I really kind of we went over it is just how big they are um, you know a lot of again especially if you're doing it self-guided um, it's a pretty daunting task to take care of a moose properly 
and legally. The area I was hunting in up in Alaska where um, you could not bone anything out. Um, so it was bone-in only, meaning that you, you couldn't just strip down the meat. So, I mean, you're talking four quarters and a, and a, and a, a hind quarter and a front shoulder on a big Alaskan bull moose are as much as any human being can, can pick up, or at least I can. Um, so I guess I just be aware of what you're getting into, and I've had, you know, like even the biggest elk you've ever seen or the biggest Shiras moose, they're not even in the same ballpark. It's the equivalent of killing your neighbor's diesel truck, taking it apart, and moving it across the street or down the road and putting it back together again. I mean, they are <laughs> absolutely enormous, um, and the hide is so thick, and they're just, it's just, be prepared, especially in warmer weather, like, it can get away from you. It's it's a it's a really difficult task. I mean, as far as the number of sharp knives you're going to need, um, and and I guess the other thing I wish I knew then is just really sitting still and glassing. I mean, you're not going to walk down an Alaska uh, an Alaskan moose. I mean, really sitting there, letting them move, call, waiting for the right weather, being up super early. That's that's what I wish I'd have known the first time. Uh, I shot a few of them over the years, and uh, but yeah, I mean. I, when I think of Alaska moose self-guided, where it really just comes down to packing meat and cutting one of those things up, they are their next level. Would you recommend doing a goat hunt before a sheep hunt? I, uh, let's uh, see, easier on the pocketbook? Question mark. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's just price, um, for sure. I mean, a goat hunt is every, you know everything or more than a. I mean, if, if goats had bigger horns and and were more impressive. They they'd be the fifth species in the uh, in the Grand Slam. I mean, they're, I I absolutely love hunting goats. Um, so it's not like one is less appealing than the other. I mean, and again, you you generally in goat hunting goats will get into country that is a little steeper, a little nastier. I mean, they can just live in country that's worse than than sheep. Um, they're, they're obviously different hunts. I mean, if you blow sheep out, they move a long ways. You may never see them again. Goats tend to stay in the area. I mean, they go to escape cover and will kind of hang out. But um, well, I love hunting both, and I'm going to continue to hunt both as many as you can. Um, unless you got a really good deal on a sheep uh, or, a, or drew a tag, I would, yeah, we're going to go hunt is an awesome experience. Best boots for sheep slash goat hunting. Um, <clears throat> for sheep goat hunting, again, you're going to, you're really going to want to look at a stiffer boot and it may not be the same boot that you're taking the lower 48 or just kind of elk hunting or whatever. But for me, the, the Scarpa Rebel K is a superior boot to just about anything that's out there for a couple of reasons. When it's fully synthetic, it dries faster. It's got a stiff shank for ascending and descending. Um, the sock fit on the Scarpa, I find far superior to any other boot. They're very light, meaning you're going to work, you're not going to put the work in picking up your feet on every step. Um, and then the synthetic, for me, it's just, they fit the same every single time you put them on. They don't stretch, they don't move. Um, so, yeah, I, I prefer a synthetic boot and, and the Rebel K. And then in the later season, if you're, uh, you know, if it's colder, the Rebel Ultra is, is a really good option. Uh, again, just a little more aggressive, especially if you're using crampons. Um, so, yeah, those, those, that's what I prefer. But, you know, I, I, you know I'll, I'll say the same thing I probably said last time. 50% of the equation with boots is your foot. If your foot does not fit a Scarpa or whatever boot that, that you're looking at, um, really fit is a big, is 50% of the equation. When would the 145 Ultramarino be a good layer? Well, it's it, there's a couple different places you could lose, use that. Um, it's a great base layer in hot weather, especially we have a new hooded one, you know, it's um, it's very good. I to just eat. got those, by the yeah. way, those things are awesome. Yeah, it, it, or as a, as a part of your layering system in, in later season, but uh, the 125 or the 145, I use early season, kind of standalone, and especially now with the hooded one, um, that's the beauty of those pieces with the new yarn, the next skin comfort, um, no matter the weight, so um, I'm, I'm, I really prefer merino next to skin, uh, especially when it's hot out. So I would, I would say base layer in hot weather or part of your layering system as it gets colder. Yeah, I mean, I, I've worn that 145 zip teeth. That's kind of been my favorite base layer forever. And, um, you know, it's just something I wear. You know, I, I wear it even in the boat fishing. Um, I wear it in the summer, you know, for the warmer hunts. And I even wear it as my base layer for the 
for the colder hunts too. I, I love that 145. I'm super stoked about the hoodie coming out. Um, just a little bit more sun protection, a little wind protection. Yeah. Um, nice, nice added addition there. Uh, will Kuyu ever come out with truck seat covers or partner with a company that does? Um, I don't know. That is a good question. I'll look into that. I, I, uh, I guess I haven't got that question a lot, and it's really not something I've thought about it. You know, looking at it, it would be pretty nice. Um, but I, I'll, it's something I'll check into. I, I really don't have an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go on a first sheep hunt, most cost-effective place to start? There's a couple different ways you can look at it. Um, most cost of, you want to go on and most cost effective. Um, obviously, a limited area in Montana is would be the most cost effective. Um, there's a couple ways to look at it too. It's going to take a you know a really long term plan, and you know a lot of times people don't think about the fact that time is money. I mean, um, so you know if you if you put in ten days in a year and buying a non resident tag and twelve hundred bucks a year and you know for 150 days, depending on what you do for work. I mean, it might be more cost-effective to, to book a sheep hunt. Obviously, the most cost-effective um, place to hunt sheep, and I'll just call it North America, would be obviously a doll sheep in Alaska. And there's a lot of great outfitters up there. And um, most cost-effective would be to book it ahead of time and save up and, and go on it. Uh, there's a lot of other things you could do, like we went through, obviously, a goat hunt or, um, you know, I guess what you'd we get it, it kind of depends on what you consider a sheep. Um, you know, there's odd ad down south, which are 100 percent a goat, and I've done a few of those, which are really cool. Um, just depends on on what you know what your goals are. But uh, I would say cost effective wise, you know, obviously booking a doll sheep hunt in Alaska, or depending on where you live, um, or the unlimited in Montana. Brendan, a question like this. Correct me if I'm wrong or if you've seen the same thing. A lot of times guys ask this question and say, well, did you, you know, did you buy raffle tickets in all the states? And the answer is no. It's like, well, I mean, the raffle tickets generally are fairly cheap in relation to what you get. And so that would be something else that I would add that, you know, make sure you're in all these raffles. Yeah, sometimes the odds aren't great, but, I mean, you can't, Say you want to be a sheep hunter and not be in these raffles. I'm just curious your thoughts on that, Brendan. You have to do it all. I, I, you know, I get a lot of questions about why I want to go sheep hunt. What's the best way to do it? The best way is to be totally obsessed with it, and that means every option possible. That's that's the next best best option. Um, again, I, I won my first stone sheep hunt in a drawing. There was probably two thousand people standing there, and they picked my name out of it. Um, I've drawn them. I've traded for them. I've paid for them. Um, I've killed management rams. I've, you know, all kinds of stuff. You have to be obsessed with wanting to go sheep hunt. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, and, and, yeah, you have to be on everything. I'm in every draw in the West for every sheep that I can possibly be in. And I'm, I'm hoping, even when you look at the odds right now, if I, if I draw one more sheep tag, let's just say I've got, I just turned 41, I've got 30 more years in the draw. If I win one more sheep tag, and I, I will be absolutely thrilled. Now, I'm not banking on drawing another sheep tag, um, but I'm in every drawing. It's it's worth it for me to be in every single drawing every year. Um, and and it's, that that's kind of boils down to anything. As far as raffle tags, you look at the guys that have won a bunch of raffles. It's pretty simple. They're in a bunch of raffles. You know, guys that have drawn yeah. a bunch of sheep tags, they are in a bunch of sheep draws. Guys that have taken advantage of cancellation hunts and stuff like that, they are always ready to go. Um I say, you know, like if you want a reason to not hunt sheep, there's plenty of them there. And if you if you are obsessed with hunting sheep, you're going to find a way. Good stuff, Brendan. Thanks so much for coming on and answering questions. I know the Kuyu customers um, absolutely love it. Uh, I know the podcast listeners love it, and it's always great to talk to you. Um, your plans for this spring? Uh, what's going on up there in the Montana area as far as spring bear hunting? We have a pile of snow up here. I'm, I'm planning on hunting bear this spring. I, I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to hunt bear, bear this spring. And then I have a June 1st grizzly bear archery hunt with Lance, um, which I'm really looking forward to uh, up in Alaska. And uh, other than that, just, just, yeah, I mean, we have had a super, super late winter. We still have a pile of snow here, so it'll be interesting to see how the spring shakes out, shakes out here in Montana. But, uh, yeah, me and the little guy are definitely going to be out there hunting this spring. That's awesome. I saw on Instagram the other day, I uh, shot his 
tooth out. He had a loose tooth, so you set it up so he would shoot it through his bow and pulled it out. It was incredible. Yeah, it was pretty funny. He uh, yeah lost his first tooth, so he hooked it up to his bow with a, with a piece of dental floss, and he shot the thing out and worked pretty well, actually. So, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> the look on his face was so funny. Yeah. If he yeah. isn't a chip right off the old block, I don't know what is, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty fun. So that's one thing I've, I've last couple of years of taking him black bear hunting in the springtime. It's you know the weather's generally pretty good and not that far from the vehicle and can can you know just making it fun. So we killed a really big bear last year, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, well, uh, if anybody has any other questions, like I said at the beginning, just send them into service at cuyu dot com or. Um, email us the company or call in. Uh, we will get these questions answered or send them in to Jay Scott. He'll get them over to me or we'll do another one. In, I mean, yep. where we about we'll every two one. weeks, huh? Yep, that sounds good. Well, um, God bless you, buddy. Thanks for coming on and thanks for all that you guys do at Kuyu and uh, keep up the great work. Thanks a lot, Jay. We'll look forward to the next one. We'll, we'll talk to you soon.